Hello and welcome to this video on upper lower bounds and error intervals. So let's just say that I measured a value and then I rounded it to the nearest centimetre and I obtained a value of six centimetres. Now what would be the shortest and longest possible lengths of that object I measured? Well let's think, if I had a measurement of 5.6 centimetres for example, uh, 5.6 centimetres to the nearest centimetre would be 6 centimetres. So it could be 5.6 centimetres. Could it be any shorter? Well, what about 5.5 centimetres? And that indeed rounds to 6 centimetres because we round up, don't we? But if it was 5.4 centimetres, that to the nearest centimetre would be 5 centimetres, which is too low. So we know that the shortest possible length is 5.5 centimetres. What about the longest possible length? Well, 6.4 centimetres, that to the nearest centimetre, would round to 6 centimetres. What about 6.5? That rounds up to 7 centimetres. But what about, if we go to two decimal places, what about 6.49 centimetres? Well, 6.49 centimetres still rounds to 6 centimetres. And in fact, we could have 6.499, etc. So the longest length we could have measured before we round to the nearest centimetre is 6.49. 9999999, i.e. 0.49 recurring centimetres. However, 6.49 recurring, we can show that's actually the same as 6.5 centimetres. Now that's a bit confusing, isn't it? Because 6.5 centimetres would actually round to the nearest centimetre, to 7 centimetres, not 6 centimetres. But it's basically just a smidge below 6.5. But it's so infinitesimally close to 6.5, we just say that the longest length is 6.5 centimetres. Now this shortest length here we call the lower bound. It's the lower bound of the measurement and this longest length is known as the upper bound. And the quick way usually to get it is if you halve the accuracy, the accuracy is the nearest one centimetre. If you halve the accuracy, well, that's 0.5 centimetres. And then we can just add and subtract that to the 6. So 6 plus 0.5 is 6.5. And 6 minus 0.5 is 5.5. So to get the lower and upper bound, just add or subtract half the accuracy. And I'll put that in a box because that's super important. And what is the point of all of this? Well, let's just say that you had a shelf and you were putting um, some objects in a line on your shelf, which you were told were six centimetres long. Now, if you were trying to be as pessimistic as possible about how many objects you can fit on the shelf, you would assume that each object is the longest it could possibly be. So if someone told you it was six centimetres long, each object could have been as long as 6.5 centimetres and you know that will give you um, the lowest possible number of objects you can fit on the shelf. So it allows us to make further calculations to do with kind of best case and worst case scenario. Right, let's do some more examples. So we've got the value of x is rounded to the nearest 10 to obtain 40 centimetres. Determine the lower bound, the upper bound and the error interval of x. So it's 40 centimetres to the nearest 10. So do you remember, we can just all subtract half the axis. So half the accuracy, the accuracy is to the nearest 10, half of that is five, so we add or subtract it. So the lower bound would just be 40 minus five, which is 35 centimeters. And indeed, 35 to the nearest 10 would be 40, wouldn't it? The upper bound, we just do 40 plus five, which is 45 centimeters. And again, remember, even though that rounds to 50 to the nearest 10, we say because we just mean a value just slightly less than 45, but we just say 45. We don't write 44.9 recurring. Now, the error interval is basically all the possible values of x we had. Now, the actual value is x. Now, what could have x been? Well, x could have been any value between 35 and 45. So x could it be any value greater than or equal to 35. So x could have been 35 itself because 35 rounds to 40, but it could be any value less than 45. And remember we said it couldn't actually be 45 itself because 45 to the nearest 10 is 50, not 40. So it's any value up to, but not including 45. It could be 44.999 and that to the nearest 10 would be 40. So this is known as the error interval, which is basically all the possible values, a range of values for the original measured value, in this case, x. Let's do some more. So we've got two 
a value x is rounded to 3.2 to one decimal place. Determine the error interval of x. So it's 3.2 correct to one decimal place. Now, what does it mean to halve the accuracy? Well, if we mean to, it's correct to one decimal place, it means it's correct to the nearest tenth. One decimal place is the tenth digit. So the accuracy is to the nearest naught point. And then when we halve it, that becomes 0.05. So we're going to add or subtract 0.05. So we're going to do the same thing as before with the error interval. X is between, it's greater or equal to or less than this upper bound here. Well, the lower bound, we can just do 3.2 minus 0.05, and that gives you 3.15. And let's just check, 3.15 to, to one decimal place is indeed 3.2, and it can't be any lower. 3.14 would be 3.1 to one decimal place, which is not 3.2. And then we also add the 0.5 to 3.2, and we get 3.25. And by the way, in general, and this is not always true, you can often just put a 5 on the end of that digit to get the upper bound, and you can reduce this digit by 1 and put a 5 on the end to get the lower bound. But that's not always true. It's definitely true if you got to the nearest hold, the nearest one decimal place, two decimal places, etc. But it wouldn't be true if we wanted to say to the nearest 5, which we'll see in a second. Now, part B. What if x was truncated to 3.2 to one decimal place. Now, if you haven't seen the video on truncation yet, I advise you do that. But to truncate a number just means you don't round it up or down, you always round down. You discard the digits at the end without checking the next digit. So for example, if I had um, 4.7777, um, if I truncate it to, say, one decimal place, it would just be 4.7. If I rounded it to one decimal place, it would be 4.8, wouldn't it? Because we'd have to check the next digit. That's greater or equal to 5, and that goes up to 8. So truncation just means you wipe the digits off without checking anything after. So it'd just be 4.7. Now, let's think carefully about this. What is the lowest value which would truncate to 3.2? Well, we can't have, say, 3.19, because 3.19 to one decimal place would truncate to 3.1. So the lowest value is actually 3.2. So x is greater or equal to 3.2. We can't have any lower than 3.2. Now, what's the greatest value that truncates to 3.2 to one decimal place? Well, it could be anything up to, say, 3.29999. Because if you had 3.29 and you truncate it to one decimal place, you just get rid of everything after the first digit after the decimal place, and we get 3.2, which is right. So we can see it's everything up to, but excluding 3.3. So it's less than 3.3. And that would be the answer. What about the next one? A measured length is 15 to the nearest centimeter. What is the lower and upper bound of the length? So we've got 15 centimetres correct to the nearest centimetre. So we can do the usual thing, the lower bound, I'm just going to put LB for short. Now it's correct to the nearest one centimetre, half of the accuracy would be 0.5, so 15 minus 0.5 is 14.5 centimetres. And the upper bound is 15 plus 0.5 is 15.5. And again, we can use this little kind of trick. To get the upper bound, you just stick a 5 on the end, so it's 15.5. And to get the lower bound, you reduce the last digit by 1 and stick a 5 on the end, so it's 14.5. But for the second part of this question, that doesn't work. So it's now correct to the nearest 5 centimetres. So we have to subtract and add half the accuracy. So 15 minus half the accuracy is 12.5, and the upper bound is 15 plus half the accuracy is 17.5. And let's just check that. What is 12.5 to the nearest 5? Well, it would be 15, but 12.4 would be 10 to the nearest 5, so that is correct. And finally, what about this one? Y is rounded to two decimal places to 17.34. What's the error interval of Y? Y is 17.34, correct, to two decimal places. And we want the error interval of y. So we do the usual thing if for an error interval. y is greater or equal to this and less than this. Now, this one we can use my little trick. So if we just put a 5 on the end, that gives us our upper bound. And to get the lower bound, we just reduce our digit by 1 and stick a 5 on the end. So 
0.335. And we can just check that. What's this correct two decimal places? Well, look at the second digit after decimal place. We check the digit after. Is that greater or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So that goes up to 4, 17.34, which is indeed correct.